movements uh, AWED have seen the Palestinian struggle for liberation as a feminist issue and it's central to decolonial feminism therefore we're doing this uh, event in support of what is happening in Palestine right now but also because uh, the the WHRD MENA coalition or the regional coalition for women human rights defenders coalition in the Middle East and North Africa has issued actually a call which is the place where I work a call a week ago asking feminist and international human rights organizations to stand in solidarity with Palestine and with the Palestinians as they uh, continue their struggle um, uh, against uh, all forms of you know settler colonialism human rights violations uh so uh, etc uh, we also it's very important for us before we jump into the conversation to acknowledge that this is a hard moment that we are living right now and although the colonization of palestine have been going ongoing for 73 years it's an incredible moment of grief but it also unites us uh, across Palestine and internationally. Uh, I'm going to quickly introduce the speakers that we have and uh, I'm hoping that if I missed something, please do uh, say it when you, when you, when you, when it's your turn to speak. Um, quickly, I'm Sara. I work for the Regional Coalition for Women Human Rights Defenders. We will be sitting and having a conversation with three Palestinian, amazing Palestinian women activists uh, from Gaza Fida, from uh, uh, Yafa and the led uh, Rawan and from Ramallah uh, Sandy. Um, I'm just trying to be fair with the with the introductions. So um, Sandy is a feminist and human rights anti-imperialist activist from occupied Palestine. She is the founder of the Feminist Diaries, an intergenerational collective of young women and girls, and they do a lot of uh, production of art, short stories about their uh, realities or their lives under settler colonialism. Um, Fida, uh, okay, Fida is uh, a feminist Palestinian living in Berlin right now, but she covers and she is from Gaza. She's been doing uh, a documentation of most uh, injuries, uh, missing people, uh, people who uh, martyrs, people who were killed uh, on the recent attack on Gaza. She will explain to us more. Uh, and also we have Rawan, an activist uh, from LID, and uh, she's she's engaged in the youth, uh, Palestinian youth movement uh, against settler colonialism. I know I missed a little bit with your introduction, but because I'm doing the moderation uh, as per this like moment without really uh, uh, preparing. So I'm gonna start with Fida. Uh, Fida, please, can you please introduce yourself and let us know right now what's the situation in, in Gaza and tell us a uh, little bit about the public documentation project that you're doing. How did you um, start with it? How are you engaging with it? How are people receiving from it? And most importantly, what do you think people need to do with the knowledge and documentation that you've uh, offering to the world to, for them to understand what's going on in, in Gaza and how to respond to it? Yeah, uh, thanks, Sarah. And first, I have to thank you all for uh, putting this together. It's very heartwarming to see people uh, listening to Palestinian voices and also to give Palestinians uh, a space to talk about. I'm saying this because I live in Germany. I just make this very short. And it's really hard to be a Palestinian in Germany. Uh, I feel very much excluded, isolated, and alone sometimes when it comes to the Palestinian issues, even uh, the Palestine, any, the Palestinian issue, because even among progressive circles here, it's progressive except for Palestine. So it's good to have a panel where we can just talk about what's going on in occupied Palestine. Uh, and thinking of um, yeah, as you said, I'm a Palestinian feminist from Gaza. Uh, I'm a gender studies researcher, and I currently live in Berlin. Yeah, that's it. And uh, as Gaza is returning to the public eye and all of that, I have to mention that uh, the things that are happening in Gaza, it's not something new. Uh, Gaza has been, uh, has been under Israeli blockade for 14 years, Israeli and Egyptian blockade so far. And they, they, Gaza has also suffered three wars 
uh, several ground invasions and also the march of return uh, but what's going on this week or in the past 10 days I would say it's not only in Gaza, but across uh, Palestine, it's an ongoing Nakba. What we are seeing uh, is like the Israeli state is literally trying to get rid of all Palestinians uh, at once, displacing people in Sheikh Jarrah in Jerusalem, uh, taking over houses in Lid, Yaffa, and Dhaka as well, and of course, bombing uh, Gaza. This is like really, I've lived the three wars in Gaza. Uh, I left Gaza in 2016, and I, 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 I haven't seen anything like this before, like the things that are happening. I feel I'm physically in Berlin, but I'm mentally in Gaza. I cannot sleep. Uh, I barely sleep at night because this unprecedented destruction, this is really something new. They are testing most probably new weapons on Gaza to be sold later to the, to, to European countries and countries around the world. They are targeting the infrastructure, the electricity, water pipes. They are targeting, targeting healthcare centers. They are targeting uh, apartments, shops, bookstores. They are bombing uh, residential buildings. They are targeting press offices. And the most important thing, they also started this assault with targeting farmers because they know how important the work that the farmers do uh, near the border, providing the market with fruits and uh, vegetables. And they, uh, they have also targeted schools. Um, they have targeted uh, COVID-19 uh, testing centers. And we have to say that all of this is happening uh, amid a, a global pandemic. So they are bombing Gaza amid a global pandemic, uh, exacerbating uh, the really very bad situation in Gaza. So today, they, today the Ministry of Health uh, reported that number of people who were killed in the latest assault on Gaza uh, uh, is around, I would say, uh, two, 237 now, including uh, 66 children and 39 women or 40 women, and more than 1,700 were uh, wounded. And at the same time, the honor war is uh, it, 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 the Israeli state is preventing the honor war and other humanitarian organizations from uh, bringing aid uh, to Gaza. This is about generally what is happening uh, briefly in Gaza. But what I'm doing about what's happening in Gaza, in Gaza right now, it's uh, it's public documentation about people who are being killed by the Israeli state, basically. Uh, I made a list uh, of their names, uh, ages, if I, if, if I get the age right, and I try to contact families, get pictures of their, of their lost loved ones, and I, I publish them online, uh, mainly on Twitter, because I think it's important for people, not, because, not just because they are not numbers, but people people can relate more to the faces, to the stories, to the dreams, to the memories, to the details, to the life that they had, and the future the, the future that they would have had if they were not killed by the Israeli state. And doing this uh, was really very hard. As I said, I feel I'm mentally in Gaza, and it's very draining getting in touch with families, asking, asking them what uh, about their loved ones, what did they like, uh, uh, how are they feeling right now, if they need any kind of emotional support, uh, if there is anything that we, they want us to mention online, and, and all those small details about their loved ones, it's really important to put it uh, online. But I'm also doing this because uh, even the Ministry of Health is unable to uh, uh, publish a full list with names, because I think they cannot keep up with <laughs> the bombing that are happening everywhere. Like they publish an update and then after one hour they publish another update. So they cannot even keep up with uh, uh, the amount of bombing and uh, the people who are killed right now in Gaza. The number is really rising very uh, fast. How did how did I start this? I, I think I, did, I, I just did not like that people are saying uh, that there is 20 people who were killed. There, there are 40 people who are killed. Uh, they just bombed uh, a house and wiped a whole family. So I 
so I thought it's important to get their pictures and names and just uh, put it online so people can relate personally to their, as I said, to their stories and to their pictures. Yeah, I think uh, that's it. Um, I mean, thank you, thank you, Frida. And you know, as you speak, I definitely hear the intense emotions, but it also hit me that and the four of us are Palestinians and the four of us literally have to talk about this through, yeah. um, you know, th through this setup because of the ongoing catastrophe that we hope it ends and that it happened to, to our people. Uh, thank you for that. We will go back to actually the documentation and that idea that we are, that Palestinians are not numbers to, you know, that they are humans that are being killed, but we will move to, um, Rawan, I know Rawan's time was limited, but still she wanted to be here with us. Rawan, I would really appreciate if you can explain a little bit, introduce yourself, because I, you know, didn't really do a good job, I guess, on that front. Uh, but also, can you actually not only introduce yourself, but also, you know, kind of tell us and talk to us about the powerful protests that is going on right now in cities that are led, Haifa, Yafa, and also that these cities, these demonstrations are challenging and bursting the whole coexistence narrative uh, that the mainstream media is pushing and actually how, how do we see it, uh, how do we see it and how do we link it to an apartheid state into like a, you know, uh, into, and how do we narrate it into the, the also the Nakba, so please. Okay, thank you, Sarah, and thank you everyone for my, inviting me. Uh, so my name is Rawan Psharat, uh, originally from a uh, destroyed village called Malul near Nazareth. I moved to Jaffa before, a, a, or a, I moved to Jaffa 11 years ago. Uh, so I'm based now in Jaffa, uh, and uh, I'm, I will start maybe a little bit just to uh, um, uh, to talk uh, about the uh, general context, okay, on what's going on here now uh, these days. And uh, I think that uh, yeah, maybe it's a uh, yeah, an obvious thing that I'm going to say, and also Fida already said, it's a uh, yeah, that uh, it's the the worst really a uh, yeah, situation that I have ever uh, lived here. Uh, so in my personal a uh, um, uh, secure, I I I I really think that it's a yeah, it's very bad situation these days, and last. A, uh, a week I really needed just to go back to my family and just to be there for three days just to uh, not to be connected to anything here in Jaffa because of what uh, we had here uh, and it's ongoing uh, 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 Nakba as uh, Fida mentioned, uh, mentioned but it's really very um, a worse situation all over but this is in a, in a, maybe in the worst thing that we can uh, talk about but I think that the amazing thing that come up from this say uh, revolution, let's say, or uh, what's happening now is that uh, uh, we understand as Palestinians here, at least in Jaffa, that we need, or not only in Jaffa, all over uh, the Palestinian cities or uh, the mixed cities that we need to, uh, to, to build a, um, a, um, a system within to protect ourselves because there is nobody will protect us if we will not do that. So here in Jaffa, I'm sitting now in a room, an emergency room in Jaffa that we, we built uh, last week on a, uh, or a, a two weeks ago. Um, and uh, we, uh, uh, so this is uh, now, and I just uh, want to, uh, to start maybe a little bit about uh, the, con the general context. So, um, if we talk about the context here in uh, in uh, about within Palestinians inside Israel, so we talk we start talking about uh, 48. That uh, uh, the the first point that I want to address is that uh, uh, we have a uh, uh, the, the the conflict started within the uh, uh, the the Palestinians that they were majority before 48 and they became minority. Okay, and the um, uh, the, the Jews that they were minority all over the world and they became majority here inside Israel. So, but the, the state of mind of Palestinians here all over that we feel like we are majority, okay? This is our state of mind that 
nothing will happen to us or or we will a um, we will protect ourselves and the state of mind of the Jews here inside Israel that they are the victim and they will keep uh, uh, being the victims all over because they uh, everyone just want to uh, to do bad things to uh, uh, Jews so this is the conflict also in in in, in the uh, meaning of state of mind that we uh, we are uh, uh, feeling here so from 48 until 65 we were talking about the military regime okay and that literally military regime when we talk about military regime here we talk about a checkpoint we talk about a people that they need a, a, um, a we need the to, 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 to go from place to place we they need the um, um i uh, i forget the name okay i forget the word but i will uh, uh, um remember so it's a military regime that we also feel it right now here in jaffa okay here in jaffa two weeks ago the police entered jaffa okay uh, and the milit the uh, uh, the army in in into uh, go into jaffa and the blocked the uh, uh, the main streets uh, in Jaffa, Shari uh, al Hilwe, Street, Street, and we can we we cannot go uh, anywhere uh, without uh, the police asking us where are we going. Okay, so this is the the the, the real uh, situation now. So if we talk, if I remember what my uh, grandmother, grandfather, and my parents uh, uh, told me about what happened here. So now I'm going in these things, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, here in the uh, in the um, central garden in Jaffa, in uh, uh, the Gaza Garden, we call it because uh, uh, it's connected to Gaza. We have every day the soldiers inside the garden, okay, with all the guns, and sometimes just to uh, uh, to talk about the erroneous thing uh, here that they are playing with the kids. So it's the same pictures from El Khalil, from Hebron. It's the same pictures from East Jerusalem, uh, that the, the military and the army uh, uh, now in Jaffa. And then we are talking about the, uh, what we uh, uh, um, got here. It's the, the first intifada that, in a way, we were um, also involved in. Uh, and then I think that the, the most important uh, political thing that happened here in inside the uh, uh, Israel for the Palestinians, it's the second intifada, uh, what happened in the uh, 2000s. And uh, I think that the, the very important thing that happened there, it's that all of the Palestinians from all over uh, uh, um, the uh, uh, Palestine, let's say, or uh, uh, called Israel, uh, go out and demonstrate and protest against uh, uh, the Israeli policy against us. Um, but actually what we feel now, it's like a, um, a, the issue is bigger than what happened in uh, 2000. It's now, um, um, uh, we're we talking about two uh, important things. We're talking about the settlers, Okay, uh, the, the settlers that they are entering and they got funds from the municipality of Tel Aviv and from the, the government to, to have houses here in Jaffa. We're talking about a, a Palestinians that there are not that 700 Palestinians or houses here in Jaffa that they are supposed to go out from Jaffa because they don't have house. Okay, uh, they, uh, we are talking about a, a, the uh, the, the big title is ethnic cleansing. Okay, this is what we are talking about. Uh, that they are want to uh, us to move from here, and we are talking about uh, the police. Okay, and the army that they are supporting the settlers here inside Jaffa, going with them. Okay, side by side to protect them against us. Okay, and I will finish with the with the thing that happened the last week. With uh, um, with what happened here in in uh, in Jaffa and now uh, and uh, and I think that the most important thing that's happening every day is that we are uh, struggling also and uh, uh, demonstrating against the media, okay, the Israeli media, because 
it's it's a um, it's a all uh, uh, against the Palestinians. It's a uh, they they are they are also taking a part with within just to kill us. Okay, to kill us, and I'm not talking only about uh, uh, killing us uh, yeah, physically and also mentally. Okay, two persons were killed last week, one from Emil Fahem and one from Lod, Led, uh, sorry, and they, um, uh, and they, uh, we, we're having here more than 50 uh, prisoners now uh, 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 from Jaffa uh, in the jails that we are uh, supporting them and supporting their families every day. Um, and I will stop here. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Rowan. And we will go back to the issue of ethnic cleansing and the issue of the media. And we will go back specifically because when everybody feels like this is the Nakba, this is the catastrophe happening again to Palestinians inside uh, the state of Israel, it's very important to to understand that at this, at least this time, we're, we have our cameras, we have our Twitter accounts, we have our Facebook, and I think this this is really what made the difference. And how Israel right now is being not only watched, but people can see and judge for themselves. You know, unlike the the 48. Uh, from this from this kind of framing, I would like to uh, move over to uh, Sandy. Sandy, you're from Ramallah. You were. Uh, I know you have. You know you have couple of thoughts about also this whole you know international uh, standards in terms of holding Palestinians accountable in terms of holding Israel uh, accountable and how it, in this moment we have to revise also this uh, you know this uh, protection that Israel have the the you know no, nobody wants to to hold Israel accountable and what does that make them you know when you are being silent that uh, a complete um, unarmed actually population at least within the 48 is being wiped out you know what what you know how, how do we how do we deal with that so uh tell us sandy where thank you sarah and um thank you for fida and Rowan for speaking their hearts out um fida i feel compelled to echo your point on um being born and having to be brought up all our lives in wars, in attacks, in genocides, in ethnic cleansing. And for me, although I've never been into Gaza, but I have been born throughout the first Intifada, my whole adolescence was during um, the second Intifada. Uh, my kids were brought up in uh, times where uh, missiles were falling down uh, insanely on Gaza. So this is the life that we have always knew. But at the same time, um, and I also wanted to echo Rowan on just giving a sense of what it feels like to be living under a military state and what colonial practices that really carries along the way and that the forms of killing are numerous. And despite the agony and despite this difficult time where we share our experiences with you, I need to also take a stand and to take a moment to show solidarity and respect for every international person, for every sister and brother across the globe that stood up, that spoke up, that were in solidarity with the Palestinians. And I need to also say that I'm in awe of my Palestinian people, in, in, in awe of every activist, of every Palestinian brother and sister, of everyone who has been hopeful and determined to take the opportunity to continue with our struggle. Um, I see some hope because the language has shifted a lot. I see some hope because historic Palestine is no longer historic. We've seen people coming and gathering and uniting from the from Gaza, from the West Bank, uh, from the uh, Sheikh Jarrah, and uh, different places of uh, uh, what is now uh, what is known as 48. So we have gathered in one vision that centers our liberation at the very heart. And we have put aside our differences, our um, gender identities, our political experiences, our affiliation, our religion, etc. So I think this is really something to appreciate, to respect, and to more importantly think about how we can take it to a more sustainable level. Now we have a momentum. There's an opportunity, despite the suffering. And again, I say it's agonizing to see all the souls, the innocent souls of children and, and women and, and young girls, the dreams and the spirits, all 
leave us, but at the same time, we're committed to continuing this struggle. And I have been thinking just throughout the past few weeks, looking at the youth organizing in very powerful ways that violence and repression have always been tools to maintain colonial practices. So what do you expect from us? Do you expect that we will sit through the oppression as long as we can breathe? I was just thinking about how entrenched also white feminism has been throughout the way, through development, through humanitarianism. The context was really well explained by Rowan and Fida, and I need to echo that. This is not today, this is not last year, this is not the second intifada. We've been under colonial regime for more than 70 years now, and what does that mean? It means ethnic cleansing, it needs apartheid, and most importantly, it needs militarization. And for complicits like media and international community to come and try to equate and actually equate at some certain points, unarmed civilians, a people, their tools is only stones with a state of military, of a, a state of the art weaponry. Most of them are important from uh, uh, dominant capitalist powers from the world is really so unjust and we don't have to take it. And the lack of political will, whether it's on uh, um, the international community or uh, probably the double standards, as you said, Sara, before, the double standards of international justice have portrayed its manifestations in very ugly ways. And the media has always been complicit. Um, Everything that you see at the news started, most of it started when Hamas fired some rockets, but nothing before that. So the absence of media, the um, biased representation of media, and just uh, uh, um, the, even the, the announcement of number of rockets from Hamas versus the absence of complete uh, uh, disclosement of uh, information about missiles from uh, 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 Israel and the manufacturer behind those uh, uh, missiles is completely um, absent uh, from the media. And um, one thing that we always consider, um, you know by now that every few years there's an attack on Gaza, and this is deliberate by all means, indifferent to further reasons. And we see that humanitarian aid is pouring into Gaza right after the attack is over. And I think this is a time where we say, we do not want your humanitarian aid. We need that blockade to be lifted, the occupation to be ended, to impose sanctions on Israel, and to end the double standards of international justice. Humanitarianism is in the first place one of the most problematic reasons on why wars continue to perpetuate. It normalizes war. It normalizes the aggressive attacks and genocides and massacres on Gaza. And it also, contributes greatly to the perpetuation of false narratives. So now the media and uh, it's portraying that Gazans are being um, victimized. We're not being victimized, we're being slaughtered, we're being executed, we're being terminated. And the thing that um, the whole uh, uh, narrative behind Israel defending itself is so, um, decontextualized. The whole violence of this colonial uh, regime is decontextualized. We need to look before that. We need to look at how mobs are really lynching in the streets of Jaffa and Umm al-Fahim, backed by state. We need to also increase our pressure for uh, uh, increasing, uh, uh, saying, imposing sanctions on Israel, Israel and ending the culture of immunity. Um, again, the solidarity campaigns that have been running across the globe are really in most critical need right now. Intensify it, uh, call for sanctions, uh, end the traumatizing experiences, and just find ways to um, make multilateralism more gender sensitive, more gender responsive. Girls and women are being indiscriminately uh, impacted by uh, 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 the, the uh, aggressive violence in Gaza. And one last thing, uh, Sara. Um, we have seen that the protests across the West Bank, just taking a, a, a step back and looking at the footages and the videos from different places of the world is um, a scene of hope. It's a scene of unity. And no matter how 
vulnerable we are, no matter how traumatized we are and how um, tired we get as activists and as also civilians, as women, because you know, the, the oppression is multiple on us. We need to also remind ourselves that we have connections and networks of sisterhood, of solidarity, of uh, um, global connection to the global south, to the world, and that are what we seek in terms of justice and peace is really connected to every uh, citizen in the globe. And um, that would be it. Thank you. Uh, sorry. So yes, thank you all. Um, sometimes, you know, it's so hard to keep uh, speakers uh, in check for time because sometimes it's very important what they're saying. But also, it's good for me to also mention that, which which will take us to our uh, next list of questions, is that I feel that, you know, this question of time and what to say in this specific moment also says a lot. I feel that we do come from a history, unfortunately, even with the, within our within our allies uh, within human rights organizations as Palestinians that we uh, we were not given we are not given really the enough time we need to talk about what we need to talk about so I feel that's why all, always you know Palestinians are going you know off their time because there's so many things to talk about actually you know so for, moving from this and how I understood it so for us at the coalition when we uh, code an action for an action from global and feminist organizations to be in solidarity. We were specifically also hoping that uh, Palestinian feminist uh, organizing, documenting, uh, also, you know, kind of have an interaction conversation. We can all think about, for example, how do you, how do you envision a feminist solidarity to what is happening right now? Whether in Gaza and in, in, inside the uh, Palestinian cities, also, what would be a good solidarity action? What is needed? But also, uh, how do we, you know, how do we think about, you know, how do how do we practically now ask or or you know, what do we want from a global feminist a solidarity campaign or a, or a moment right now? Because I think it's very important, obviously, because there are so many things to say that the world I feel does not know. We will hear from you three, and I hope you can answer within like two, three minutes, but we also are starting to receive some questions from our audience. So maybe we'll start with, with Fida, and then Rowan and Sandy, and I will be taking questions from our audience. So it would be great if you can reflect about what you just said, you know, the ethnic cleansing, about un being, you know, I mean, I feel like Sandy and Fida and Rowan, you're all fighting big media corporations to actually tell, tell the truth. So how do you, you know, how do we do that? And what does a global feminist solidarity look like in terms of getting our voices across, Fida? Uh, I know, uh, I know we are very short on time. I'll try to speak maybe faster, but I have before answering that question, I have to say that uh, what Rowan and uh, Sandy uh, have described is uh, literally ethnic cleansing, not because like they treat the people in uh, living in the 48 as less citizens. No, they treat them as Palestinians and they treat, they are against the very existence of Palestinians. And that means we have a very legitimate and a, a moral right to resist by all means uh, uh, possible. And actually, we are very impressed by the, this scale of resistance these days, taking into account the blockade in Gaza. And it's really different this time because it's popular resistance, uh, resistance coupled with armed resistance too. And I, 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 I don't want to separate the people from Gaza from people who are resisting as if they are different groups and this time people in Gaza were really uh, saying yes we want to fight uh, this is one point um, the other thing uh, Palestine as a just cause uh, it will always trigger solidarity protests always it's not something new all these protests mean a lot solidarity is resistance not just like i'm from palestine uh, in solidarity with someone in colombia or chile no solidarity is resistance we need to build bridges we need to connect struggles at the at the end of the day we are suffering from the very same system but in different ways so what we need to do is uh, or what we are expecting is to build solidarity bridges 
And for feminists in other countries, I think the best thing they can do, or for progressive uh, trends in different countries, is to fight in their own country the regressive uh, powers. And that will have an will echo somewhere else. It's like the domino effect. If someone is fighting injustice somewhere else, it will show something positive in Palestine or in Jordan or in, or in Yemen or uh, in the United Kingdom. So the best thing they can do is to, uh, uh, to struggle against injustice in their own countries, but at the same time to connect to uh, Palestinian feminists and Belt Bridges as real solidarity, not just like, uh, because the terms get co-opted sometimes. It's not about being uh, uh, included or represented. No, it's about how do we fight together against the whole uh, system as a whole. Uh, the other thing, I think uh, this time it's different because uh, it, it, the Israeli state is getting really violent in Gaza and in West Bank and in the 48. And that's for one reason they are getting that violent. And uh, it, it, because I think they are scared and they know that people know liberation is within our our reach. It's not a dream. It might happen in five years. It might happen in, in, in maybe less. I mean, people are resisting in besieged Gaza, also West Bank, and the occupied 48. And this is scares the system. It's, of course, they will go really violent in Gaza and, um, and elsewhere. Uh, and what scares them the most, that it's not just one way of resisting. It is like, uh, as I said, popular. Uh, resistance, armed resistance, and also even the places like West Bank where the PA, which is a client to the occupation, people are going to the streets, it scares them a lot. People, um, they know it's just like a, a matter of uh, time. I, I, I honestly, I don't know where things are going, or where are we heading, but let's uh, wait uh, and see. We have seen like uh, a mass strike also in Palestine. I know it would it will not bring the uh, Zionist economy down. It's totally different from the South Africa uh, model because it doesn't work this way. They are two separate economies, but uh, it is something that should like keep pushing people towards uh, uh, liberation. Uh, but also strikes are not enough on their own. Uh, what do we need uh, as feminists also? I'm, I'm thinking about feminists in Palestine, like Sarah, you are a Palestinian refugee in Lebanon, and we can, I think we, we would never get the chance to meet, except virtually uh, through Zoom. And this says a lot about uh, how can we organize as Palestinian feminists? Like there, there is a list of challenges uh, that that we face uh, and it's indeed very long starting from being stuck between local patriarchy and occupation uh, borders and all of that lack of resources and infrastructure so it is a, a challenge maybe we should also as Palestinian friends think how can we really build a feminist movement and then also connect to uh, the global feminist scene or movements uh, around the world uh, yeah, that's it. Like I have ideas here and there, nothing concrete. Where's Sarah? Where is Sarah? That's a good question. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Connection issue. Okay, so maybe I can continue. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. So uh, yeah, um, uh, I want to talk about uh, yeah uh, yeah thank you. So it's a um, when we uh, uh, when I talked about maybe the hope of this uh, revolution, uh, it's that uh, uh, because when we, when we talk about uh, yeah, the West Bank, we talk about the right of the right of fair freedom, um, uh, and we, when we talk about diaspora, we talk about the right of return, and we we talk about Palestinians from forty eight. Uh, we talk about uh, equality, and I think what happened here inside this uh, um, 
uh, revolution is that we are all in the same and sorry for the for the word the same shit so it's a yeah uh, it's we connect all the struggles together so it's all started from Sheikh Jarrah okay uh, from uh, the evacuation of uh, many Palestinians from all over that uh, I already mentioned also in Jaffa and uh, yeah I think that what we need now okay it's or how how we see or how I see uh, as myself the solidarity that I think that we need now international intervention this is what we need all over because I think that a uh, um, um we we need you to also to push or a maybe a, to do campaign all over the world just to do a global campaign against all a, a, against the racism let's say or against the a, a institutional racism from the israeli government against all the palestinians okay and i think that this this will help a a, 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 a us uh, I think that uh, uh, we need uh, uh, we need you to uh, you know to send maybe a letter of letters all over. But this I think that this is very very important for us because we uh, maybe I started that uh, I said that I'm alone now here in, inside the um, uh, emergency room. But I think that and I I feel like I'm not alone. Okay, all over because I really feel the solidarity all over the world. But I need. I think that what we need it's not only to spread the word and to say what we uh, what uh, we send you it's uh, also to to maybe to uh, to push and to uh, uh, to do actions uh, 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 within the Israeli uh, government and I think that international intervention will help us a lot uh, for now for example what's happening in uh, Sheikh Jarrah they uh, postponed the evacu evacuation in a, a, a three months, so it helps a lot uh, 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 to push and to do things. And I think that it's a, um, uh, it's also it's it's besides the the uh, uh, the solidarity and spreading uh, all the things that we send you, and uh, uh, also the true things, the facts that we are uh, uh, living uh, uh, nowadays. Uh, so. Uh, uh, and uh, also we need the uh, yeah so this is i think what uh, uh, what we need uh, uh, for now and uh, yeah, i have to leave because i have an uh, another uh, uh, meeting so thank you very much for inviting me and thank you very much for the for your solidarity everywhere thank you everyone. and also for the speakers thank you nice to meet you everyone bye thank you Rawan. stay safe um, Thank you, Sandy. Um, I'm gonna ask you to also share with us how you, you know, moving on from what Rawan was sharing. Uh, what does global feminist, um, global feminist uh, solidarity, or the global feminist movement can do right now to support, amplify? Uh, you know, like the Palestinian struggle, and if you have any actual practical ideas on how to actually yes, move to have sanctions, etc. Uh, there are actually um, quite few uh, um, options, Sarah. A very wide spectrum of things that we can do um, throughout our feminist solidarity. So there are things as uh, uh, basic as calling things by their name. And uh, here we encourage feminists and uh, uh, free citizens of the globe to be critical of the language, to set things right, to call them out when they're wrong, to speak up. They can um, as, uh, uh, write articles, tweet, talk to family, neighbors, uh, spread awareness on campus, uh, or even just um, fight the indoctrination that is visible in the Israeli false narrative most of the time that is uh, blaming uh, Palestinians for the struggle, which is not really a struggle, more of a, we said politically correction is really important. So uh, um, we need to also connect with activists. Like if you can just share experiences, lessons, uh, strategies about organizing, about liberation, just try to exchange as much as possible south to south. Um, be brave to take uh, um, to understand that some systems can be overhauled, but in many times there are other systems that need to be dismantled 
and to be entirely rebuilt. Um, you have to do your sharing of unlearning because you've been learning for too long, sometimes uh, um, things that are not true. Um, and, and then we can talk about uh, calling for demilitarization, for protection of civilians, as enshrined in the Geneva Convention and different human rights uh, um, instruments. We need to, we need your support in pressuring your governments to impose political and economic sanctions on Israel, starting with military embargo. Uh, there are many ways to start. We need to hold Israel accountable for its war crimes um, under international law. And there are many campaigns out there that you can sign petitions, you can um, go into meetings and uh, uh, there's the resolution to block uh, um, Biden's 735 million uh, to arm sales to Israel. And you can start from there if you're based in America. Um, there's a long list that the Human Rights Council dispatched about um, companies that uh, uh, profit from uh, complicitating with the settlements or that are based in settlements in legal under international law, boycott those products and start from there. Uh, look for reliable resources for information and don't be misguided by mainstream media. And remember that Palestine is a feminist issue. And lastly, um, remember that this is a process. Decolonization is a process. It's an act that requires so much resistance, so much bravery, and so uh, much intentionality. And for that sake, don't tire, don't give up, don't quit, and don't bore. And we are sisters together and united together, and we should give each other the strength that we need. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Very, very beautiful and very sincere and really, really visionary, solid uh, actions that uh, I think people, allies can take. I know uh, Fida wants to say something. We have a few questions from the audience. Please also, because of the technical issues, people did not really get that they can ask questions. Please, if you have a question, please say it. I will read it and then ask Sandy and Fida to say it. Uh, Fida, please, uh, we would like, like to hear your addition. Maybe be conscious of time so we can also take the questions. Of Oh, okay, uh, so I'm just saying this to feminists watching this, uh, or people who are, who identify as fem uh, uh, feminists and concerned with gender equality and feminism worldwide. When it comes to Palestine, we are under colonization. We are colonized. The oppression of Palestinian women cannot understood outside of the context of the structural violence by the Israeli state. You cannot just separate them. The violence that Palestinian women are subjected to every day cannot be separated from the reality of the Palestinian society as a whole. You cannot just say like, no, we would like to focus on Palestinian women. No, you, you, you basically cannot separate this. So Israeli, Israeli colonial policies and the, the disposition of Palestinian land and bodies for decades is also gender-based violence. It is gendered violence against Palestinian women and the tough political and economic realities caused by this colonial uh, state does play a role in reinforcing violence within the Palestinian community itself. So when we speak of violence against Palestinian women as feminist, we just cannot, it cannot be understood outside of the context of uh, the colonial violence in Palestine. Okay, Sarah, maybe you want to go to the questions. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you, Fida. I think I missed some of it because of our lovely internet in Beirut. <laughs> Okay. I'm sorry, um, but I'm. I will. I will give you more time to speak as we close. But we have just two comments. If you quickly, quickly would like to. Uh, I mean, I think the first question you've already answered about how practically we can, you know, say this is a solidarity action you can take. I think Sandy gave really a good list. That gave also a really good list and the discourse of why this is a feminist issue that we really need to like not 
they're not going to silence us into supporting Palestine. I think this is the, the core of it for feminists anywhere in the world. But also someone from our lo lovely audience, uh, is, I was, was also saying that also, you know, how much, you know, we can also rely on media. And if we need to kind of, um, if I understood is, you know, how much we should, for example, support alternative media because the person who asked this is a, is a radio presenter. So maybe like we need to support media, give it more funding, more alternative media. So maybe if you want to quickly comment on that before we actually start wrapping up. I know this is, I don't want to wrap up, but you know, at, uh, we have to, so we can also do other things uh, for Palestine. So uh, floor is yours to that, Cindy. Uh, yeah, so I'll be really quick. No, I don't think uh, we can rely on uh, big uh, media giants. No, basically they are uh, complicit. Even when they try uh, uh, to cover what's happening in Palestine these days, the language they use, it does blame Palestinians for the things that are happening for them. And they do equate the colonized with the colonizer. So as John Molino said, the revolution will not be televised. We, we definitely uh, cannot rely on them and we need to find other uh, ways, alternative media and even social media platforms uh, while they are trying to censor us and uh, uh, taking Palestinian content down. But we need to fight back, like online is our street as well. We are trying, we are trying to fight online and um, offline. So uh, the best Thank thing you. is to amplify yeah. Palestinian voices. Just thank you. I will come back. Maybe Sandy, if, like for quickly, you can if you have something to say because we have a a very small question that I actually would like to ask before we close. So Sandy, I quickly. think Sarah, we have yes, I think we have uh, explained that um, we have little trust uh, in governments, in UN system, international community, media, and all that we see as complicit. And we said uh, earlier today that. Uh, we are in awe of people across the globe. And I think when um, alternative media also failed uh, to save our content, whether by content being reported, censored, or taken down, or even uh, um, uh, alternative, I think when someone, this truthful, this truthful from media is out there, reach out to us. We have been eloquent enough, reach out to us, um, expose our stories, uh, put our uh, 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 experiences out there and be contagious, set an example for other sincere media outlets. And I think uh, lastly, Sarah, that we have been uh, working on different levels. So by the time that to that or Sandy are working uh, with groups of uh, solidarity and uh, uh, um, networks, other people are also working with the media. So never lose hope. Yeah. So we got a very quick questions. You know, we've been anticipating this kind of questions. They didn't really pop up, maybe because of technical issues. But we have a question that I wanted to just highlight so that you know it's it's understood that we, you know, engage with these kind of questions. So the question is, and if we can answer it quickly, because we need to close, uh, if Hamas viewed as part of oppression to take ag action against. I mean, in Gaza, I can. I, I, I'm not uh, on their side when it comes uh, on how they are dealing with everyday, uh, today, like things. Uh, it is an Islamist movement, and I disagree with them. But when it comes to fighting colonialism, no, I'm definitely like with every single person who is fighting settler colonialism in Palestine. But within the community, of course, we don't. We disagree with them a lot. Thank you, Fida. Sandy, quickly, if you have a comment. That is one question that is always troublesome, that is always getting us in trouble, and that we hate to receive all the time. Why do you need to understand? Um, why do you need to equate oppression? Why do you need to say that Hamas is part of the oppression? We don't ideologically accept with Hamas. We don't really want to be governed necessarily by Hamas. But at the same time, how do you ask, how do you ask the oppressed to respond in specific ways that you see fit towards their oppression? Since when was resistance uh, a manual? 
And then uh, when we ever try peaceful uh, uh, resistance, we're also condemned. Look at what happened with BDS, the efforts and the attempts to criminalize BDS as a peaceful ways of resistance to be anti-Semitic is really um, an answer to the question on whether Hamas is to be the one to blame or is part of the oppression, really. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. I mean, I had wanted uh, different questions because I, I had like really burning uh, answers. I've been like kind of practicing for the past few days when people do these like really uh, tricky questions that they don't really, for me, these questions are not also problematic because they just, uh, they, they always don't get it in a way, but they always try to kind of criminalize uh, people's uh, narrative, you know, you can be a feminist and have different narrative about different things that like you cannot criminalize people because uh, by, you know, by assuming uh, association, which is, you know, such a such a weird way of actually doing uh, a very weird way of doing ad hominem. But what I also wanted to say is that I feel also this is a very, unfortunately, this is a learning moment for a lot of people, a lot of people because now they're seeing watching understanding that you know they actually have to doubt this narrative you know of uh, of uh, of the israeli state i think it's also good to invite everyone who feel automatically before that they ask who died before that they before they ask question why did they die uh, i think i think it's a good moment to do that right to train our heads to train to understand why do we want to automatically find ways to criminalize any palestinian voice rather than listen to it. I think this is where learning happens, this is where shift, you know, we make a shift and we do understand what people are going through. Uh, we have 10 minutes. Um, I think it would be great if we can hear from you uh, any last words before I say something really quick on behalf of the coalition and then hand it over to Awid. Um, so yes, Fida, Sandy. Any, any last words? Okay, I'm muted. I'll just conclude since you have missed what I've said before, uh, Sarah. I've said the oppression of Palestinian women cannot be understood outside of the colonial uh, context in Palestine and exactly. the violence that Palestinian women uh, are experiencing is it cannot also be it cannot be separated from the reality of the Palestinian society as a whole. And uh, the, the same feminist activists like myself who are struggling against structural pat patriarchy in the Palestinian society, we are struggling against colonialist policies. Uh, we get arrested, we get tortured in Israeli jails, they get uh, searched and humiliated at checkpoints, surveilled, their freedom of movement is taken away from them, they are besieged in Gaza, they are denied from healthcare services, they are being blackmailed, and the most important thing, their right to self-determination is taken away. So that's the only thing that I want to uh, say. Thank you. Thank you, Fida. And also, if you would like to remind us of your Twitter handle, because I think it's very important for people to follow up, yeah. you know, your documentation, because it's essential. Yeah. Uh, so uh, my Twitter handle is uh, Fida, F-I-D-A-A-Z-A-A-N-I-N. -A -A -I, I think someone dropped it on uh, the uh, comment section on uh, Facebook. But uh, later this week, I'll publish a Flickr album with all pictures and names of uh, uh, people who were killed in the latest assault. Uh, on Thank the, you. Yeah. Thank you, Fida. Sandy? I'd like to build on Fida's point on patriarchy and to what extent it's really um, rooted in colonialism and also capitalism. Uh, looking at the global order and the global systems and the structures that really repress us and oppress us in different of where we are located, it is the criminalization of the effects of both colonialism and capitalism. So, for example, they criminalize the homeless, so they don't need to uh, house them. They criminalize the poor, so they don't have to address wealth inequality. And they criminalize drug addicts, so they don't have to address uh, substance abuse as a public health problem. And this is exactly 
uh, uh, similar to colonialism, they criminalize Palestinians so they don't have to address their responsibility towards the liberation, towards their protection, and towards the end of uh, 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 immunity for Israel and the uh, commitment towards international justice. And with this being said, I would like just to remind you that everything that's happening is not complicated. If you really contextualize everything, if you go back and do your share of learning, if you talk to Palestinians, it's really that easy. It's really that simple. We want to live in a free, safe way, world where we have our dignity, our rights, our freedoms without any compromisation. And that's as simple as that. How hard could that be? Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, exactly on point, you know. Um, so I want to thank you both. Uh, you know, as Sara, uh, uh, who, who works at the coalition, I would like to thank you. But also as Sara, the Palestinian, who I'm just, you know, like living off the news here in Beirut, trying to also, you know, understand my feelings about it because exactly how, you know, we, we exactly how we are, you know, made to feel as Palestinians, you know, in different places of the world, but somehow being, you know, truly united. Uh, I would like to just make sure that uh, our audience know that the coalition is quite committed to supporting and highlighting and working for global solidar feminist solidarity for Palestine and Palestinians. We've already been publishing a lot of reports coming from the lawyers team inside the, uh, inside the Green Line and uh, in Gaza. We're uh, providing content. We're also trying to make bridges, connections, uh, as much as we can. People in the Mesoamerica, in Sub-Saharan Africa, North Africa, anywhere in the world, in Southwest Asia, wants to sit down and listen and learn and think and you know have questions we are always going to do this as a coalition um i also wanted to say that you know in these like really weird moments of uh, of people really merging emerging and really you know like kind of blossoming in our struggle i would like to just remember something that audrey lord said and she said that our silence will not protect us and i feel you know um a lot of people have been silent because they thought this would protect them, but we cannot be silent on, on the atrocities that is being committed by the Israeli state. Um, I would like to thank AWIT for just, you know, like reading our call to action and jumping on this opportunity. I'm gonna hand it over to, uh, I think, uh, Margarita, right? To Maggie, yes. Uh, to close on the on the behalf of AWIT. For everyone who was watching, thank you. And please write to us and we will just quickly respond for any question on our facebook on thank our you, thank you email. very much thank you. to the women human rights defenders uh mina coalition for um co-hosting this event and a special thank you to you sarah because uh you stepped in for the facilitation i'd like to invite the speakers to share their handles in the chat we'll share it after the call so please uh, follow our social media do follow them and amplify their work silence will not protect palestine take action we're calling on all feminists around the world to take action today free palestine palestine is a feminist issue it's time for you to take action so go beyond the complex issue take a stand and take action to free palestine if you'd like to join a with you can sign up to become an AWID member. Join our global community of feminists and movements and be part of conversations going forward and cross-border solidarity. Thank you for following Thank you. us. Thank you for our brave speakers, Pita, Sandy, Sarah, and one who had to leave earlier for raising your voices and helping people understand, calling on people to take action to free Palestine. Thank you, everyone. Also inviting people to follow uh, the Women Human Rights uh, Defenders Coalition for Mina, WHRD-MINA. Yes, and anywhere in the world you want to do a solidarity action, you have questions, just get in touch. We are more than happy to, to always accommodate for Palestine. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for putting this Thank you. Together. This is all for today.
checking out. Okay, so I think we stopped recording, right?